is really happening at the 34th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. Find out on News Matters. UN Human Rights Commissioner Zaid Raad Al Hussein's statement on Sri Lanka yesterday elicited mixed reactions from the government. Although the Human Rights Commissioner welcomed the positive measures by the government to ensure reconciliation and accountability, he urged the government to adopt a mechanism to implement recommendations in the resolution passed in October 2015. He also appreciated the report by the Consultation Task Force for Reconciliation Mechanisms, which called for the setting up of a hybrid court with the involvement of foreign judges and prosecutors. This indicates the UNHRC demand for a hybrid court remains the same, even while the Sri Lankan government continues to say a hybrid court is not in line with the constitution. Addressing the interactive session on the High Commissioner's report on Sri Lanka, Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Harsha De Silva said the government was committed to the reconciliation agenda, including truth, reparations, justice and non-recurrence, with a victim-centered approach, recognizing the impact of conflict on citizens of all ethnicities. No country's human rights record is perfect. It is always a work in progress. The people of Sri Lanka have been through extremely difficult and painful times, and although much has been done, there is much still left to do, including strengthening our institutions and achieving economic progress. There are multiple challenges that we face, but as a responsible and committed government under the leadership of President Sirisena and Prime Minister Victor Masinghe, we are determined to stay the course, the Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister told the gathering. He also announced Sri Lanka would co-sponsor the resolution, giving the government two more years to implement the recommendations of the resolution passed in October 2015. The United States, the United Kingdom, Macedonia and Montenegro will be the main co-sponsors of the new resolution. A section of the Indian media has already indicated that New Delhi too might vote in favour of the resolution. What remains unresolved is the matter of the international judges and hybrid court. There is this seemingly unbridgeable gap between the expectations of the international community and the objectives of the Sri Lankan government. Gap notwithstanding, the Sri Lankan government will have to take meaningful steps in the direction of accountability and reconciliation within the next two years, which includes the establishment of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Office of Missing Persons. Whilst ensuring a credible mechanism locally, the government will have to communicate its position on a hybrid court to the international community, including member nations of the UNHRC, in a convincing manner. The success of this attempt will hinge on Sri Lanka's ability to ensure the independence and impartiality of the judiciary, especially when it comes to cases involving the military. Above all, the current administration will have to show the UNHRC and other members of the international community that it has the political will to ensure credible accountability and reconciliation mechanisms. If the government fails at this, a hybrid court may be inevitable in two years' time. For the moment, the proposed two-year extension will give breathing space to the government to navigate the troubled waters in the local political domain and proceed with the recommendations of the UNHRC resolution. Join us for another segment of News Matters on Tuesday. I am Royal Raymond. Get the Daily News app free on your mobile phone. Visit apps.lakehouse.lk and download today. Daily News. Be better informed.